everyone, my name is Maddie. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to this weekly reading vlog. So I'm calling this a weekly reading vlog but that is a bit of a stretch considering it is Thursday evening so it's only going to be four days if that but we're going to go with it anyway because hopefully I'm going to be reading a lot in these four days as well as something else quite exciting. So I was kind of considering vlogging this month in general but then I really decided I had to vlog this week because the two books I'm planning to read this week are both ones I want to talk about. The first being The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue one of my most anticipated books of the year. I've been so excited for this, I am actually about 120 pages in so I'll give a quick update on where I'm at with that so far in a second. But I'm also reading Akamath this week, hopefully. I should be reading this over the weekend if I can and I feel like you guys just want to know my thoughts on this because because for anyone who doesn't know I wasn't big on Akatar but this did get chosen for me by my Dart Attack TBR which you can go and watch and everyone's been saying that I will probably enjoy it so we're gonna give it a go, so I'm reading that this weekend. But quickly for now, The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. As I said, I have started this. What page am I on now? 136. And I'm really enjoying this. I'm not so far loving it quite as much as I hoped to. It is quite lyrical writing, but it's also not. There's a lot of metaphors and a lot of really pretty description, but I wouldn't necessarily say it was poetic or lyrical, which tends to be what I really, really love. So it's not quite what I was expecting and thus far the plot hasn't really picked up yet. I am loving a lot of things. I love Addy, I love the idea behind the story and the detail is phenomenal but the plot hasn't kicked in yet which you know a hundred some pages in I would kind of hope it had but I'm definitely gonna keep reading like I'm not disliking it at all it's just not quite as phenomenal as I was expecting. Like this is the sort of book I would expect to read a page and be like oh it's gonna be a favourite book ever and it's not quite that. I am tabbing a decent amount though I'm definitely enjoying it so excited to keep reading and I'm gonna be doing a lot of this tonight because I need to get this finished tomorrow so lots of reading today but that's about all I have to say for now I think I'm just gonna go and read I am exhausted because last night was an event run by Mysterious Galaxy Books I think in the US which was Lainey Taylor and Alex E Harrow so I had to watch that but it is at 3 a.m my time so I was up till four half four a bit later than that and then I had to be up at a decent time today because I had a session at the gym so very tired but gonna go read. If I can get to page like 350 today I'll be pretty confident I can finish this tomorrow. But I have to finish this tomorrow because I'm watching a V Schwab and Madeline Miller event which is also in the middle of the night for me. Joy of living in the UK and all these events being American. But I would much prefer to finish reading the book first so definitely getting that done in the next two days which should be more than doable but it is quite a slow read. It's not really really slow like I don't read it too slowly but it's it dawdles not that sounds really bad but when I'm reading a lot of books like you're like oh what's next oh what's next and so you like read faster to like find out the way this is written with so many metaphors and so much flowery writing in the best way is I when I'm reading it I almost feel like completely zen it just draws me straight in and keeps me chill so I do not rush through it at all I'm not intentionally reading slowly but I'm definitely reading slower than I would read a lot of other books so it's not a quick read but I'll get through it the other thing that I've had going on this week, which has actually already happened, is I have a new bookshelf. I have been wanting a new bookshelf for a really long time. I have no space anywhere, it's just chaotic. But there is no space in my room to have more bookshelves. I have three big bookshelves and three small bookshelves plus a book cart, which is every spare space of this room that is going. So there's no space for any more. And for ages I've been not sure what I'm going to do in terms of getting more bookshelves. But we have had this idea that inside my wardrobe there is a little bit of spare space at one end, which is a very useful wardrobe space. And so we're going to build a custom bookshelf in there, I think. Very, you know, a la Books and Lala, having my closet bookshelf. So that was the plan and we have done it. We, we did it. it, we've been planning it for ages and then suddenly we just did it really unexpectedly and so I hadn't started this vlog yet because I just hadn't got around to it this week and I haven't been reading for the first few days of the week but I have filmed building a bit of that bookshelf, not too much of it because it's a lot of drilling and sawing which isn't the most interesting to watch and I have filmed some of the reorganisation. However the reorganisation is not finished, I still have gaps on the bookshelf, I have stacks of books here still because I don't know where they're going um, I might try and finish that before the end of the week so you may see some more clips of that but I'm going to roll the clips now that I have of the bookshelves and explaining what needs rearranging and then you may see some more later if I can actually find a way I'm happy with this. I did consider making it its own video but I just don't think there's enough to it and I'm going to try, try being the optimum word, to do a bookshelf tour at some point though the problem is because of the space my bookshelves are in it's very difficult to get a camera that can actually see them so we'll see if that happens but 
yes, I will show you those clips now of the new bookshelf, which I'm very excited about and also caused me to lose a lot of sleep because I stayed up way too late organising it because we only finished building it at like 11pm and of course I had to stay up and reorganise all of my books so let's show you that. So I'm not really sure how this is going to go, I need to clean my whole room so my brother can get in and make this bookcase and then it's going to be a big reorganisation. I do have a pretty good plan of what is going where, I'm actually not sure what's going to go in the wardrobe yet, but this is all feeling very a la books and la la with a closet bookcase. But this is the point we've got to. So I'm going to go tidy like a mad person and then we're going to start building and hopefully in the next day or so I should have a new bookcase, which I need because I don't have space. Okay, so this is how the reading nook is looking right now. There is normally a chair in this corner. I have moved it out as we're about to start building. But I've got my really tall bookcases here, which are actually two bookcases stacked on top of each other. I have my little bookcase there and I have my stack of books and this is my wardrobe which you can see is currently partially empty because just in there is where the new bookcase is going. Due to this being a small space it's very difficult to show you but you can see here we've got clothes and this big gap and right in this end this piece of wall sticks out quite a way meaning that it's difficult when clothes go in there it's in the way and I don't actually need that whole space and so we are building shelves into there and that's going to be a bookcase, in effect. So, I look like an absolute hot mess, but the shelves are in. I did not expect to be putting these shelves in anytime soon. We've had the plan for a good couple months, but we didn't actually think we'd get around to it and just didn't know when it would happen. And then sort of as we were nearby doing a different errands today, we are like, oh, we may as well go and get the materials. And we got home at like three. I'm like, we have all the materials and my room's kind of clear because I've been kind of keeping in mind that it's mainly doing. So we could just do it if I just literally clear my room. Like I'm not even gonna show you my room right now because everything that would be on that side of my room is just piled on my bed and this area of my room. So it's absolute chaos. I actually cannot currently get to my bed or get in it. So it's late, but I'm going to start organising so I can put everything back because due to these bookshelves being literally in my wardrobe when all my clothes are in my wardrobe they're not going to be the easiest thing to access it's not going to be bad but there's certainly not going to be books that I want to get to every single day so that's one of the reasons I need to reorganise so I can put low priority books over there but it's going to be really cool and it's a huge amount of storage space I just tested roughly how many books I can get on a shelf and I think it's about 15 maybe like 10 to 15 probably and I've got five shelves so that's a really good amount. That's, you know, that's 60, 70 books at a push, which I am thrilled about. So we're going to get started. So I'm going to really quickly talk you through the problems that I'm having with my bookshelves at the moment. And this reorganisation is basically going to be a big chain reaction of this bookcase here is basically my favourite books. Um, I will show you more of it in a minute and explain why I need more space in certain areas of it. But I'm very keen to keep the majority of these books on here apart from the bottom shelf which is the ones that are going to be moving. Those will then move on to my main bookcases over there which I will again show you in a second and so then some of the books on there will move to this big stack I have and the stack is going to move into the wardrobe I think is the plan. This is going to be kind of chaotic, it's going to be a process because also this bookshelf especially because I film in front of it and because it's all my favourite books I like having it being aesthetically pleasing so I don't do it in any specific rhyme or reason apart from authors stay together so I just do it how it looks nice but obviously I am taking off quite a few books to create space for books but some of those are ones that I don't have yet that I know are coming so I'm going to need to work out a system of creating that space but still having it look nice in the meantime which may be kind of interesting so it's going to be a process we'll see what we get to but starting here I'm going to talk you through the problems I'm having then we're going to reorganize this move on to problems I'm having elsewhere and we're just going to do a big chain reaction until we're done as I said, it's late at night, so I don't know how much I'll do today. I may at some point give up and take it up again tomorrow. If I can get to my bed, I might be crawling over a whole load of debris to get into my bed. But we'll see. If that's necessary, then so be it. But let's explain what problems I'm having here. Okay, so starting all the way at the top, this is my Veronica Roth and V Schwab shelf. However, we're running into problems with the Schwab. These are all the Schwab books I own so far. However, I have just got Addie LaRue, which wouldn't fit. Um, but to make it even fit less, I already have three editions of this book. They're the wrong way around. We go, three editions. Um, and I have two more on the way to me because I have the Illumicrate edition and I have the American edition. I really hope I like this book. I'm stupid, but I couldn't resist because they're pretty. So that's a huge problem because I need to fit five 
hardbacks on here, which obviously is not going to fit as is. However, if I remove all of my Veronica Roths, this will become a dedicated VH Rob shelf and I should be absolutely fine. Veronica Roths will need to find a home, but we will get to that in a minute. I do have a plan for how we're doing this. Second shelf, Maggie Stiefvater. Fine. She's sitting pretty. There's a little bit of, there's some space if I get one more book of hers. We're not touching that, that's staying put. Also, I just feel the need to clarify, these aren't necessarily like my two absolute favourite authors, but they're on the top two shelves because their books are short and my top two shelves are a little bit smaller. So like my Amy Taylors, which are just down here and we'll get to in a minute, don't fit on those shelves. So that's why they're there. It's not just their favourites, but they have to stay on those two shelves respectively because they're shorter books. So that's that. Moving down. Okay, so this is turning into an impromptu bookshelf tour as well, though a completely pointless one because it's all changing. So next we have my Lainey Taylor and Samantha Shannon. You can see knocking things off. You can see I'm already struggling for space because the song rising has had to go up there to fit all my copies of Priory. I also have four new Lainey Taylor books coming for the end of the year. I have the Illumicrate edition of Daughter of Smoke and Bone and all three anniversary editions because they're really pretty, the new American paperbacks, and I will eventually then also get the second two books in the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy in the Illumicrate editions when they're available. So they're not going to fit. And then in February, I have a new Samantha Shannon book coming. So like, it's not going to fit at all very soon. It already doesn't, you can see up here. So that needs a big rejig. So this shelf is going to become solely Lainey Taylor. I'm just going to have to do some like cover spacing out, I think for now to make that look good. And the Samantha Shannon is going to move down just quickly here. This isn't going to change too much. Okay, we've had a slight camera angle change to try and get this all in frame. I'm just kind of peeking off to the side. So all my Erin Morgan stands are staying put. They are completely fine as they are and they are not moving, I, especially because I feel like they need to be near Lainey Taylor for me. I'm also dead set on keeping my Sean and Maguire's and 10,000 Doors of January here because they're all portal fantasy, so it all goes well together. However, I do have three editions of Alex Harrow's new book on its way to me, as well as one new Sean and Maguire book, which is just a really small one, so that's fine. So what we're going to do is Docile and the Skyward first two books in the Skyward series are going to leave, especially as there'll be a third or fourth Skyward book eventually, so they're not going to fit for too long anyway. That's the plan there. I think that will cover that. I'm not exactly sure where Docile and Skyward are moving to. They may just move down a couple shelves. They may move all together. But then going back to Samantha Shannon, she is going to go all the way down to skipping down a shelf. Right, so I'm now literally lying on the floor to show you these bottom two shelves. But here we have my Lee Bardugo collection along with the Neverlight series and then Truth Witch in the corner. Truth Witch is going to move all together. I've not actually read it yet and I like having everything on the shelf as either books I've read or at least authors I love, even though I've not read all their books like Samantha Shannon. The plan is that Samantha Shannon is going to go in here with probably a little bit of spare space. The Neverlight series is going to stay and then Skyward is going to replace the Truth Witch series as I really love the Skyward series. So that's what's happening there. And then down here, almost all of these books are being relocated. Although this is Brandon Sanderson and I normally like keeping authors together, that's very different. That's his Cosmo books and the Mistborn series, which I'm nowhere near as in love with thus far as Skyward. And it doesn't feel like it matches the vibe of the shelf for me for some reason. Don't ask me why, it just doesn't. So they're going to be relocated as well. All of my kind of YA dystopians, so Scythe, This Mortal Coil, the Tahara Mafe Shatami series, they're all moving. Blackman's Beating I'm probably going to try and keep here if I can because it just feels like a series I love and I want to keep here. So yeah, Lee Bardugo is just going to move down. My Insurgent book is coming down, Dosar's coming down, and then hopefully keeping Blackwing's beating. That should be it. That should be the shelf. I'm now going to do it. Um, let's go, I guess. I will show you as much of this as I can in video, but it's going to be a pain to video because long, thin shelf and this is a landscape video, but we'll give it a go. So I guess cue the time-lapse footage.
So starting all the way at the top again, we have my V Schwab shelf, which is looking so nice. I'm actually really excited that she now has a dedicated shelf just to her because I love her so much. So that's really exciting. I have one of my copies of Addy face out at the moment so that when I have the next two, which should be arriving in the next few weeks, there will be space for them to fit in. But yeah, it's looking good. I really like the shelf. As I said, I'm so happy that V Schwab now has her own shelf because it's been needing to happen for a long time. I love her books so much. So this is the new Lainey Taylor shelf. I have my Daughter Smoke and Bones series face out kinda. My Arc of Muse and Nightmares face out because I love it so, so much. And then the rest of my copies of Strange and Muse. So again, it's not necessarily my favourite in terms of aesthetic. I'm not the biggest on having books face out, but I think it'll do. Um, it works for now. And again, lots of growing room because I'm definitely going to need it in the next six months. So this is my Erin Morgenstern shelf. It does have one copy of The Night Circus face out. It isn't necessarily my favourite cover, but it is the only book small enough to fit face out. All of my copies of Night Circus and Starless Sea through to my Sean and Maguire collection and the two Alex Harry books I have. Again, this has a lot of growing room as the Night Circus cover can just turn back to its spine like it was before, which is probably how I would prefer it, but for now I just need to fill the space and leave growing room. So this is the situation on this shelf for the moment. So then coming down here, we've got my Samantha Shannon books, the Bone Season series, which I've not read yet, my copies of Priory with one copy face out because it's just so pretty, and we have the Nevernight series by Jay Kristoff. Skyward and Starsight at Brandon Sanderson, and then Dosar by K.M. Sparer. So I'm really happy with this shelf, honestly. I think it looks really nice. It's not my favourite, but it'll do. And it's definitely got growing room, which is ideal because we're going to need that growing room soon. And then, sorry about the angle for this, it is the best I can do. We have all of my Lee Bardugo books, which also have some growing room because the shelf is by no means full. And then my Divergent series, which I have two full copies of because it was my favourite series for a really long time, and so I had two copies of it. Again, not the most aesthetically pleasing, but definitely works quite well for spacing and there's growing room for Lee Bardugo, which is perfect because I know she has new books coming, which I'm probably going to get very soon. So that's what I'm doing on these shelves for now. I'm not 100% happy with them. The Lainey Taylor shelf especially just doesn't look right to me, but I'm not sure what the best option is in terms of getting that into something I'm happy with. I'm gonna have a think about it. I may end up changing it. If I had more of her books coming in literally a couple of weeks, then I'd just leave it and change it then. But I know it's gonna be realistically at least two to three months before those books all come in. And so I don't really wanna be waiting that long to have a shelf I'm happy with, especially since this is where I film. These are the shelves that people see a lot. So not completely sure what I'm going to be doing about that. But I do now have four stacks of books here, of books that have just been kicked off this shelf that I need to go and find homes for. So that is the next aim. We're gonna go over there to the rest of my shelves, which is also right by where the new wardrobe shelf is and see what the plan is. This I don't have a plan for. I had a pretty good idea for what I was going to do with these shelves. That, no idea. This is gonna be work it out as we go. So let's see how this goes. So I'm holding the camera for a minute because this is gonna be really difficult to show, but just to really quickly explain what is going on with all my main bookcases, I'm just gonna really quickly talk you through it, like a super speed shelf tour. At some point I might try and do a bookshelf tour fully, but as you can see, I've been really struggling to get an angle that works. So really quickly, up there we have lots of old YA and current YA authors that I like, some I do not like anymore, but I still have the collections and I'm not sure what to do with them, so they're sticking around for now. Similar there, YA contemporary mainly sort of just collections of authors I have quite a lot of, so I just would kind of want to keep those authors together. And then I have a few middle grade books, a few romance books, and some graphic novels. Next I have my rainbow shelves, so I have two shelves there which are in rainbow, and then the shelf below it also continues that rainbow. However, this is getting more and more chaotic as time goes on. You can see I'm like squidging books in in literally every possible space that I can. There's not enough space, we need to do some serious reorganising, and then at the end of the rainbow there we have thrillers and my Taylor Jenkins read and a couple of poetry books. Literally this is the point I've got to where I'm just squeezing things in wherever they possibly fit because there's just not enough space. Moving down another shelf we have my LGBT shelf, this is mainly contemporary books, there are some fantasy mixed in however for some of my favourite authors, and at the end we have some poetry collections and anthologies. I really want to make this just an LGBT shelf, um, which I need to do, as you can see I have too many books there, so I'm definitely going to try and move those poetry books to make the space for this to just be an LGBT shelf. And then the final two shelves at the bottom here are a lot of YA and adult fantasy and sci-fi. Again, you can see the absolute chaos. I am just squeezing in books in every possible space. So some of these are going to be moved, especially like some of them I need to get rid of as I don't want them anymore. I've just not reorganized in ages because I wasn't sure what I was going to do. But this is the state at the moment. 
we need to fix this. I'm not sure what this is going to do, but I think some of these might be some that are going to move quite a lot. I also have this small bookcase here, but I'm not going to be rearranging that. That is all what I consider sort of nostalgic books. So these are all books that I read when I was a lot younger, so a lot of paranormal and dystopian books, but I still love and would want to revisit at some point or just have really fun memories of. So they're sticking around and they fit really nicely on there, so I am not rearranging those at all. And then I have this giant book stack here, which is probably going to be the first things to go into the wardrobe, as these are definitely ones I do not access very often at all. So yeah, I think those are probably going to go straight in the wardrobe as ones I'm not too interested in reading anytime soon, but don't quite want to get rid of yet, so... We're going to play. I'm just going to time lapse this because I have no idea what I'm going to do. The bookshelf reorganization is finished in inverted commas because honestly I don't trust myself to not change it in like five minutes. I'm not like completely happy with it just because I knew that doing this would create a little bit more space and I thought it would create quite a lot of space but due to wanting to declutter my shelves just by decluttering and kind of getting all the craziness and chaos away it's basically filled up the new shelf so I've not created as much space as I would like but it's all right, I will make do, I will just make them all cluttered again. I mean, I'm meant to be moving out in a couple months, so <laughs> I don't even need to worry about it too much. Not that most of my books will be coming with me because I'm gonna be in a tiny, tiny flat somewhere, so they're nowhere gonna fit. But we're done for now. I'm not gonna show you the finished result because I am hoping to do a bookshelf tour soon. I don't know when, it's such a pain to film. Like I have less than an arm's width between my bookshelves and my wardrobe. And so getting, in there is very difficult to film and these go all the way up to the ceiling so it's just an absolute pain. You've seen the main bookcase, you've seen how that's ended up so I think we're gonna leave it there for now but it's done so I'm gonna go get on with my week and actually get on with reading, fingers crossed, because I've not been doing that so far this week. Okay so fancy vlog clip today, it is Saturday, I didn't speak to you yesterday because <laughs> I was just dead all day but fancy vlog clip because I've just finished filming a very exciting video which will already be up if you want to check it out, announcing a read along for the next few months which I'm so excited about for the Daughter of Smoke and Bone series by Lainey Taylor so check that out if you're interested in taking part. But that is not what this vlog is about. Reading, that's what this vlog is about. I have now, where are my books? I have finished the Miserable Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. And I do not know how to sum up my thoughts on this book, honestly. Oh, I... it's not what I thought it would be. I think that's the most basic thing. It is not in any way what I thought it would be and what I expected. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it did severely impact my enjoyment when reading because I was waiting for what I expected the whole time. And I was like, when's this gonna happen? When's this gonna happen? 
which it's it's obviously not that kind of book and that's fine I just didn't know that so I'm gonna try and sum up my thoughts for this without speaking to you for like 20 minutes because I definitely could firstly it is beautiful but firstly it is beautiful the writing is stunning there are so many metaphors I think every single word in this book is a metaphor honestly and it was so beautiful I loved the experience of reading it I think the thing for me is there isn't really until the last like maybe 100 pages which is a lot for a 560 page book there is not a plot and I don't think there's meant to be a plot honestly there's just that's not the point the point is just viewing through a lens this person's life and just experiencing it and thinking about how that would impact someone which is brilliant except I was under the impression from what people had said there'd be quite a strong plot in this so I spent the whole book looking for this plot to pick up and I felt like I was struggling to get invested because there wasn't stakes there wasn't something to work towards and I kind of struggled with that a bit however last night I did watch a virtual tour stop for this which was V.E. Schwab being interviewed by Madeline Miller and that was fascinating and so I'm gonna reread it like pretty much straight away because I feel like I missed the point of this book partially because of what I thought it was going in and partially just because because of what I was waiting for I wasn't paying attention to what I should have been paying attention to and so I really feel like I missed the key part of this book so I'm gonna start rereading it I have a ton to read at the moment so what I think I'm gonna do because it is also a very slow read is do like 20 pages a day and just read it really slowly over I don't know the next few weeks maybe until I get like engrossed again and just want to read it till the end we'll see I may not even finish it I've had books before I've done this and I only get halfway through and then I stop and that may happen but just the way the Schwab spoke about it and the sort of things she spoke about I need to reread this with that idea in my head I feel like so I'm gonna do that. I'm tempted to wait until I get my American edition because I kind of want to read that one but it could be a while so I'm probably gonna start and then I'll switch over to that edition. But that's where we're at with that one. I don't really know what to do about it. I... it was like a four star, maybe a 4.5 which is ridiculous for how much I'm saying like it wasn't what I wanted it to be but it was that good. It just was not what I thought it was going to be. So... I'm gonna keep reading, I'm gonna be watching a lot of people's reviews, I've been avoiding people's videos or their reviews for ages because I didn't want to get spoiled and I didn't want to like know anything about it going in even though clearly I had preconceived notions because I was wrong so I'm gonna watch some of those, get like a general opinion and see what other people think. My mum did read it at the same time as me so we've been discussing it a lot but I am very intrigued to reread it. I feel like it all sit a lot better with me on a reread now I know what to expect from it which sounds really stupid but that's that's where we're at with that and so with that out the way the time has come to read A Court of Mist and Fury. I did read 16 pages of this last night and I will admit I actually got into it relatively quickly. I quite enjoyed the first little bit. I wouldn't have put it down that quickly if it wasn't the fact it was about 5am because the event finished at what three and I was chatting to my mom until half three and then I was doing making graphics for all sorts of things so I was up till like five and I was a bit tired so I just put it down and went to sleep but I'm enjoying this I'm optimistic I need to finish this in two days and it's 600 pages so lots of reading for the next two days is the plan but I'm enjoying it I don't know how to give a synopsis for this because I don't know what happens in it but it follows on from Akatar, which I didn't love but we'll see everyone wants me to read this everyone loves it I'm not gonna say I won't like it because honestly I'm a sucker and I feel like the sort of things everyone loves in this I'm gonna love so we're gonna we're gonna be hopeful that I love that. But then the one other thing I want to talk to you about just really quickly is actually something I have just got it's just arrived in the post I've been waiting for it and I'm really excited so I wanted to show it to you all and also it's not books which is pretty much the only thing I normally get in the post and so I don't normally show you those because I do a book haul at the end of the month anyway but it's one thing that's not books so we're going to enjoy it and I'm going to show it to you. So this company reached out to me, it's a company called Seventeen Backpacks and offered to send me a bag to look at and check if I liked and then possibly show it to you guys and yeah it has arrived. I'm really excited so a little bit of sort of backstory because you know I can't do anything quickly and with few words. I have a backpack. This, oh, <laughs> just grabbed it, this is my trusty East Pack backpack which I love. It's very functional. I don't mind the design on it, but I've had this for almost 10 years. I got this when I was 12 for school 
and it's still going strong it's still alive um it's you know broken in places and a disgusting color because it's so old but it's functional so i don't mind using that for like days out when i'm going to be shoving it on the floor and being kind of not precious with it but i start my job very soon i start my job in about three or four months and i've been really wanting to get a nice backpack because it is likely that i'll be commuting and if i'm commuting i have to have a backpack i cannot do shoulder bags even all of my nice handbags for like days going out backpacks it's all i use i only ever use backpacks i just cope way better with them i like having my hands free i like splitting the weight between my shoulders it's how i function i cannot do shoulder bags for my life so I was thinking I really want like a nice backpack that will fit my work laptop, fit a book for the commute and like a packed lunch and stuff. So all of this, I haven't been able to find one that I like. And I've been on the internet for months, keeping an eye out. There's the Fjall Raven Konkin. I don't know how to say it, but that company. And I always thought they were cute, but they didn't seem sturdy enough for what I wanted because I'm going to be putting a laptop and stuff in it. So I was always really, really torn. I was like, I don't know what I want to get. I want something that's pretty and can work in a very professional setting because I am going into the corporate world. But it's also stylish and I like it and durable but not heavy and I just got stuck and I didn't know. And then this company, 17 Backpacks, reached out to me and said, you know, they'd like to see my backpack and I looked at their website and oh my god, these, I haven't opened it yet, but they are sturdy, stylish, big backpacks. And I was just like, this is exactly what I've been looking for. And it's a UK based company. And this just makes me happy. They're based out of London and all of their backpack names are London's like areas of London. And I'm moving to London. So it all just felt perfect. And so I got one from them and I'm about to open it. We're gonna see what it's like. And I'm so excited. I don't feel like I should be this excited over a bag, but here we are. Okay, so I zoomed you out to make it a bit easier. We have just got out the external packaging because I don't wanna show you all my address. But this is it in the packaging. It's a really good size. So I'm gonna open it up and we're gonna have a proper look. Okay, so this is the backpack. This is the Wimbledon backpack in gray and cream is what I chose because I just love it. First things, I love the really square shape. This is like the aesthetic of the, I still can't say it, the Fjall Raven Kanken thing that I've always loved is that they're really, really square because honestly, Square backpacks are so sensible because you can get so much more in them, like a laptop and things. So it's really nice, it's really square, it's quite deep. So just like the first thing is it is a genuinely seriously durable, nice canvas. And I think it would be relatively weather resistant, which is nice. Like it's not gonna be completely waterproof, but decently weather resistant. And then I guess kind of getting into the details, it's got this really sizable front pocket, which I appreciate because my purse, my keys, my everything, I always shove in the front pocket of a backpack because I am prone to losing everything that I own, um, I put things down and forget where I've put them. So front pockets are a must for me because I put all my important stuff in there and then I know where they are. So it's really spacious inside with this big laptop sleeve, which is really hard to show on camera. But then I love all of these pockets here. Again, as someone prone to losing things, if I can work out a system for like my ID and my cards and my purse and know where everything is, if I can stick to that, that's the sort of organization which is really gonna help someone like me out. And I really like as well with it being canvas that it like a packs down small when you're not using it and it's also really lightweight because a lot of sturdy backpacks I find the actual backpack is really heavy meaning that by the time you've put your stuff in it it weighs so much that it's just an absolute nightmare to take anywhere so I really appreciate this doesn't weigh much at all and like I really love the color I love this like gray and white this feels very I just like this a lot. So I'm really happy. So thank you so much to Seventeen for reaching out and sending this to me. I obviously am very appreciative and I think I'm gonna have a discount code to share with you guys, which will be linked down in the description and on the screen. So thank you Seventeen for setting that up. But yeah, I'm so excited. I cannot even explain how long I've been looking for a backpack and it shouldn't be this difficult, but I am picky. I am really, really picky about how backpacks look. So the second I saw these, I was really excited. And as I said, this is the Wimbledon in grey and cream. And there are so many different options of all different styles, but a lot of them are this kind of quite square, quite industrial looking. So if that is the kind of thing you like, I would definitely recommend going and checking them out because I personally am really impressed. But I think that is all I have to share with you for now. I am gonna go and get on with reading. I've got a video going up at six, which is this announcement for the read along. So I'm gonna be running the Twitter and stuff then, getting really excited about it. But that's it for now. So I will see you in a bit. 
Okay, so I've been putting off ending this vlog because every day I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna just read loads of Akamath and then I'll have something to talk about. Yeah, it's Wednesday of the next week. This vlog is going up today. It was meant to go up on Monday, but I rearranged so that I'd hope to have time to finish Akamath. Still haven't. I've read 100 pages. I've not even read that. I've read 90 pages. I'm not disliking this, but I'm not getting into it. I am finding it kind of a touch too, not angsty, because I like some of the sort of the almost PTSD that's being spoken about. That's interesting. What I'm fed up of is the two guys fighting over this girl and not giving her any agency and not letting her have any free will. And it's just frustrating me to no end. I am getting into it more now that we're getting more of Resand because Tamlin's just freaking annoying. I remember when I was reading Akatar and everyone was like, oh, you won't like Tamlin soon. I was like, why would I like Tamlin? He's great. Oh my God, I get it. Tamlin's an absolute ass in this. But we've not seen enough yet of Resand for me to care. So I'm putting this down for now simply because I have another video that I need to film, which I need to read other books for. I will still be reading this this month. You will see it in a vlog in a couple of weeks, hopefully. Um, it's not grabbing me. It's not grabbing me in, what, five days? I've read 90 pages and I'm meant to be reading 200 pages a day this month, so I'm so behind. But that's it for the vlog. I've not read it. We're giving up. You will see this vlog. I've realised when editing it that I have a crap ton of footage anyway from the bookshelf reorganisation, so I'm quite glad I'm not making it any longer. But that's it. That's it for the vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the bookshelf reorganisation. Bookshelf tour coming soon if I can. Fingers crossed. But that's it. So if you enjoyed this, please leave a thumbs up, comment down below. If you've made it to the end, well done. It's a really long video. <laughs> Thank you for watching and bye and I'll see you in the next one.